Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing well and staying happy and healthy during this time of quarantine. Today I will be talking about my analysis of Gloria Naylor's Mama Day. As you may be able to tell by my title, Race and Rearing, Uncovering the Significance of Upbringing in Gloria Naylor's Mama Day, I will be talking about how George and Coco's conflicting upbringings affect their relationships with each other and with both New York City and Willow Springs. Even though we read this just a few short weeks ago, I wanted to start off by giving a very brief summary, just highlighting a few key points to refresh your memories. The novel centers around the mysticism and tradition that pervades the island of Willow Springs. Located off the coast of Georgia and South Carolina, Willow Springs serves as the former home to slave owner Bascom Wade, who was persuaded by his wife and slave, Safira Wade, to deed all of the island's land to his slaves. Following this exchange, Safira kills Bascom, ultimately freeing the slaves of Willow Springs and allowing them to take over the land that was always rightfully theirs. Of course, the island's origin story plays a significant role in Willow Springs' cultural identity, as title character and descendant of Safira, Mama Day, constantly refers to it throughout the novel to highlight the strength, power, and persistence of the citizens of Willow Springs. In addition to the renowned story of Safira, mysticism and spiritual powers also play an integral role in the cultural traditions of Willow Springs, as many of the citizens rely on the herbal and supernatural knowledge of Mama Day to restore them back to health. While the citizens of Willow Springs, including Coco, are raised in this belief of supernatural spiritual gifts, Naylor illustrates through the character of George Andrews that outsiders are not as always convinced in the existence of such prominent, powerful presences. Naylor ultimately demonstrates the tension between these conflicting cultures as the relationship between Coco and George progresses and intensifies. Now, I'm going to discuss Coco's background and her, how her experiences in Willow Springs affect her relationship with both George and her assimilation into New York culture. As we know, Willow Springs possesses a uniform racial and ethnic identity. There's a lot of geographic significance of Willow Springs as well that I will get into later in the presentation. This uniformity Willow Springs possesses, however, certainly affects the way Coco approaches adapting to life in New York. In doing my research, I came across a book by Ernest McGowan entitled African Americans in White Suburbia, Social Networks and Political Behavior. In his book, McGowan explores the socio-political effects on African Americans living in rural communities versus urban communities. Within his book, he describes a community much like Willow Springs as he acknowledges the existence of places more welcoming with people of similar cultures and upbringings. And Naylor ultimately illustrates the same African-American neighborhood that he describes as the entire being of Willow Springs dedicates itself to uplifting the collective group in the face of discrimination. However, despite the sense of community that African-American neighborhoods evoke, upon leaving such a comforting environment, one may be met with a much harsher adversity. McGowan acknowledges the difficulties in being a minority in such a prejudiced area, as being one of the few blacks in the neighborhood and workplace makes suburban African-Americans feel the discomfort of minority status more acutely. Naylor illustrates this harsh reality through Coco as she leaves Willow Springs, a place where she lies in the majority, and enters New York, a place where she is deemed a minority. Coco certainly experiences the same discomfort that McGowan defines as she describes her discomfort in the whole kaleidoscope of people, as she describes, rather than the uniformity to which she is accustomed. Additionally, unlike New York, Willow Springs upholds tradition and continuity, and Coco even acknowledges Willow Springs as a place where time stands still. In the next slide, I will discuss how this traditionality somewhat inhibits Coco from adapting to the more progressive ideals of New York. As previously stated, the traditionality of Willow Springs shapes Coco's understanding of the world. So, as she travels to New York, she quickly realizes its unpredictability. Within the novel, Coco mentions that she never knows what to expect from anything or anybody, again highlighting how Willow Springs shaped her perspective of the world. Likewise, unlike the sense of community Willow Springs provided, New York consists of more people living on Coco's block than on the whole island where she grew up, again heightening her hesitance to conform to the progressive New York culture. 
However, it is interesting to see how Coco nonetheless maintains her cultural identity through her use of nicknames, for example. There's even a scene at the beginning of the novel where George questions her use of nicknames for people, and he insists on calling her Ophelia. His rejection of her nickname, though a seemingly minute detail, ultimately reflects their conflicting cultures and highlights the tension in their relationship, even this early on in the novel. Now I'm going to take some time to discuss George's background and how his experiences in a more westernized culture shapes his relationship with Coco and Willow Springs, as well as leads to his own demise. In the novel, we learn that George was an orphan who grew up in the Wallace P. Andrews Shelter for Boys. The harshness of this environment seems to play a key role in how George views himself and the world around him. For instance, he was strictly trained to believe that only the present has potential, forcing any sort of imagination completely out of his mind. The school's emphasis on fact and reason seems to contribute to George's sense of rationality that he possesses throughout the entire novel. It's also interesting to look at how George's interests and hobbies even reflect the sense of rationality and practicality. For example, George possesses a career in engineering, which certainly reflects his scientific mind. Likewise, he admits that his love for football is simply because it's a mixture of science, raw strength, and a touch of human predictability. These seemingly mundane interests only further emphasize George's rationality, as he only surrounds himself with fact and reason. Looking at George's strict, rational upbringing, it's no doubt that his personality completely contrasts with Willow Springs and its residents. As I briefly stated before, Willow Springs holds some geographical significance, as its physical separation from the states highlights its cultural identity. However, this separation almost immediately concerns the rational-minded George, as his trip there with Coco consists of questions such as, where was Willow Springs? What country claimed it? Where was the nearest highway, the nearest by road? Likewise, Daphne Lamothe states Willow, Stri Willow Springs strives to preserve its cultural memory through the repetition of material practices. This sense of traditionality completely juxtaposes George's progressiveness. One of my favorite scenes in the novel is the scene where the bridge to the mainland gets destroyed by a storm. This scene seems to epitomize George's breaking point, and we see the progression of his frustration as he desperately attempts to offer his engineering background to help with calculations to speed up the process of repairing the bridge. However, he is simply met with a, sorry, that isn't the way things are done here. Of course, the end of the novel is met with the tragic, yet some may argue necessary, death of George. Through his constant confusion and frustration with the traditionality and mysticism of Willow Springs throughout the novel, it's no doubt that he refuses to believe in Mama Day's metaphorical mumbo-jumbo, as he calls it. His disbelief in the legitimacy of her powers ultimately causes him to experience a fatal heart attack. If you can remember at the beginning of the novel, he does mention his heart problems to Coco, so there's a little bit of foreshadowing going on there. In doing my research, I came across an interesting article by Daphne Lamothe in which she argues that George's death was necessary to the thematic importance of the novel. According to Lamothe, George's death signifies the defeat of his Western masculinized rationality to the African-derived matriarchy that rules over the island as he fails to relinquish his values and accept native beliefs, even when they seem counterintuitive and irrational to a westernized mind. Ultimately, Lamothe is suggesting here that George's cultural identity, his life in New York, and his childhood at the Shelter for Boys, inhibits him from succumbing to the radical belief systems of Willow Springs, and his reluctance to conform to the ritualistic patterns of the society leads to his own death. As I'm wrapping up, I wanted to take some time to talk about the significance of place in the novel and how the different settings reflect the perspectives of both Coco and George. As previously stated, Willow Springs is an isolated territory. It somewhat serves as a microcosm for African American tradition as the island upholds such ritualistic traditional practices. 
in an article by Courtney Thorson entitled Mapping and Moving Nation, Gloria Naylor's Mama Day, Thorson defines Willow Springs as a portable South or a place that remaps space to preserve and promote African American cultural identity. Likewise, the sense of community in Willow Springs is overt. Everyone knows everyone. This preservation of cultural identity and sense of tradition ultimately shapes Coco's understanding of the world and leads her to her reluctance to conform to the New York culture in which she resided. Likewise, when looking at the progressiveness of New York, it's no doubt that George's sense of practicality completely contrasts with the traditionality of Willow Springs. Additionally, the dense population serves as somewhat of a wake-up call to Coco, as she's not used to such crowded places. Lastly, it's interesting to look at the concept of time in both places. In Willow Springs, time seems to stand still, as Coco suggests. However, in New York, people are always moving, 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 as Coco also mentions in the novel. The two communities seem to completely juxtapose each other, and the cultural tension between these two places ultimately reflects the tension that exists among the characters George and Coco. I want to leave you today with a few questions to ask yourself. Does Coco's upbringing in Willow Springs prevent her from truly assimilating it to New York culture? I would say yes. Growing up in Willow Springs, her comfort zone was very limited. Because of the sense of uniformity and traditionality that Willow Springs upholds, she was not used to the racial discrimination nor the fast-paced environment of New York. Does George's background in a more westernized, progressive society contribute to his reluctance to conform to Willow Springs' traditional behaviors? Again, I would argue that yes, his background does contribute to his reluctance. When considering his strict childhood in the shelter for boys combined with the progressive attitude of New York, it's no doubt that George possesses a practical, rational mind, which ultimately contrasts with everything Willow Springs stands for. And lastly, does this reluctance ultimately lead to George's own demise? Again, I would argue that yes, because George grew up in a more strict progressive environment, his exposure to such radical ideas of spirituality simply do not coincide with the belief systems of Willow Springs. I want to thank you all for listening to me today. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you all have a happy and healthy summer.